I was riding my bike along a paved trail here in Montana. A downhill one, no less. It was walled in by pines, and the scent of cold air against my face was literally intoxicating. I can only describe it somewhat accurately, because if you're not a bike rider, well, it's hard to explain. This was the healthiest I'd ever felt when I was on the trail. Fresh air is like a drug. But the polarity of everything changed one evening when I was out for another ride, trying to get my fix before I had to call it a day to start another grueling work week. You see, bike rides have always been a huge thing for me. In fact, it's really my only escape. While others turn to alcohol, drugs, and very toxic habits, I try and do things that boost my body. So, I was coasting down the trail when a black bear appeared out of nowhere and even began running alongside me. I nearly wiped out, unsure of what to do with the bizarrety of the situation. If it wanted to, it could have pounced on me, but it didn't even look at me. It seemed to be focused on the downhill descent as much as I had been. I pedaled and pedaled to gain distance. That was when another shape came out of the trees that was much, much larger than the bear. It tackled the bear to the ground with a force unlike anything I'd ever seen. No, I was not drunk on adrenaline. In this moment, I thought that I saw whatever attacked the bear looked like the largest wolf I'd ever seen. I'm talking about a creature of titanic size. It grabbed the bear, yanked it by the neck, and stood up on its hind legs. The bear seemed to be yelping and grasping for life. It was terrifying. I watched this all from the shock of being on my bike, which meant I literally wasn't watching where I was going. I slid off the trail, wiped out, and eventually lost consciousness. I woke up. The picture of that monstrous wolf kept flashing in the back of my mind. That thing grabbed that black bear like it was a loose cub running away. It terrified me. I didn't know why it didn't go after me. I've tried going back on the trail since, but it's not the same anymore. I don't feel like I can relax like I used to. The anxiety of what might jump out of the woods overshadows all else. And much to my dismay, it's the same with the other trails. I'll never be able to experience the outdoors the same way again, unfortunately. Thanks for hearing me out. We lived on a big property when I was younger, and my mom is obsessed with rabbits. Sometimes, some of the local animals come to pay a visit, and although they cannot get to the rabbits, because they only have little hearts, they get scared to death. Literally, rabbits can have a heart attack and die right of fear. Anyway, my dad decided to set up some traps, Whatever was getting in was managing to climb the fence, so he was hoping the traps laid out would work. I have no idea what they thought the culprit might be. Some deranged bunny killer animal, maybe. Anyway, even though my mom loves her rabbits, she decided it was too gross to have to go and check the traps. She offered me an extra allowance if I went. So, every morning I checked and there was nothing. All the bunnies were fine. They began to suspect that whatever was bothering them somehow was intelligent enough to see the traps and run away. Coyotes, maybe? Not sure. That is, until one night. I heard this howl, followed by what sounded like a scream. I was going out there to check, but I was willing to bet there would be some sort of wolf or coyote in the trap in the morning. It was the only thing I could think of that would make that sort of noise. I told my mom that I'd heard something, and she insisted I take the shotgun with me in case. Now, you're probably wondering where my dad is in all of this. Overseas is the answer. I'm a military brat, 
so I also knew my way around a shotgun. I head out to the trap, and I knew it. There was something in it. It looked like a coyote, but much bigger. And there is something not quite right, but I couldn't decide what it is. I should have just shot it right then and there, right in the head. But I was entranced in fear and curiosity. This large, not quite a coyote. It was alive. Its back leg was caught in the trap. It was bleeding bad, but it wasn't showing any bone, so the trap had acted more like a handcuff, so to speak, a very tight one. Keeping it there, rather than like a bear trap, where it rips deep into the skin. Every single bit of common sense told me this was the douche that had been upsetting my mother by scaring her rabbits. That's all I needed to do was shoot it, like I had done to other animals. But I had this innate feeling in me that was telling me not to do it. I decided to take a quick walk around the full perimeter. Maybe I was trying to gear myself up for the inevitable. And then, when I get back to the trap, it was completely empty. Quickly, I scan the fields and woodland around, and just in the distance, I can see that large coyote limping, but walking on two legs. Walking or limping on two feet like an injured person who had been shot in the leg. I stood there staring at it until it disappeared into those woods. I told my mom that I had found a dead coyote and that I'd buried it, even though it was a lie. She believed me, and her rabbits after that were unbothered. That coyote thing that walked like a man never came back. That memory always sticks out to me, because as bizarre as the wild is, I've never quite encountered or heard of anything like that since then. I was out fishing with my father. He was older and his sight was going, but he still had a love for going out on the lake. I knew better than to pass up any chance to be with my dad at this stage in his life. We pushed out onto a quiet lake and passed the time in quiet and hushed conversation. I did catch a few catfish within the first couple hours, and they were just the right size. It was the catch my dad got that would have us talking for a long time. It crested the waters a couple of times, and it was a bass that looked like it could have fed the two of us for three days. A real beauty of a catch. My dad wasn't able to reel it on his own, so I helped out in whatever awkward giddy way I could. We were winning, though, amongst the splashes getting closer, and as most fish stories go, the line snapped at the last minute. But this was strangely accompanied by a very large splash that even a very large fish could not make. We were just as puzzled as we were disappointed. My dad doesn't like to go cheap when it comes to fishing equipment. There's no go reason why that fish should have been able to snap the line. We gazed around at the shore and contemplated going landside for a while with our fish. Our thoughts were then interrupted when something huge emerged from the water, angering the wriggling fish in place with its long hand. It struck me as a gigantic dog, but it was walking on its hind legs, almost naturally, as if that were the very thing it had been doing since birth. It shook itself and continued on swimming. The mustiness and the smell of wet dog drifted across the water to us, and there it sat on shore, on its haunches, and tore into this fish. It slowly leered over at us more than once, and the eyes I swear were glowing, like a cat's eyes when the light catches them just right. My dad and I should have panicked and gotten out of there, but we were so shocked. We just laid there, low in the boat, watching this overgrown demon dog guzzle down his prized catch. The teeth tore into this fish like soft ice cream. They were long fangs, ridiculously oversized. Its ears were also long and curved, 
giving the impression of almost sleek black horns. When it had picked off every last bit of meat within seconds, it appeared to lick its hands quickly and bound off inland out of our sight. My dad and I just looked at each other, complete disbelief. We wore the same expression. We both had seen how unbelievable that fish had been. We both had seen how unbelievable that wolf monster had been. And we both knew that no matter what or whoever we told, nobody was going to ever take us seriously. I discovered your podcast about a month later, and I told my father about it. He figured it was a good place to tell our tale, as any. So, I'm telling you what is probably the most outlandish story of the one that got away, unlike you've ever heard. I'll make sure my dad hears it if you read it. I've been enjoying listening to your program ever since I discovered it. It feels like a safe place to share these stories without ever being judged or being ridiculed. Keep up the good work. And as a quick side note before I conclude, I was beginning to really think that werewolves were real until I discovered there was such an animal called a dogman that I believe that is what we saw that day. Anyway... Thank you. Sometimes, when you're in the car and you have to go on a long drive and it's nighttime, when you have to go, you have to go. If there isn't an official service station around and it's a dark country road and nobody else is around anyway, especially if you are a bloke, you can do this. I'm not proud, but needs must. And this happened just weeks ago. I was busting, and it was at least about 30 minutes home, and I was not going to make it. So, since I haven't seen another car for miles, and I'm in the middle of bloody nowhere, I pull over and keep the engine running and the lights on to give me a bit of sight, since it is pitch black. I'm finishing up, when I began to hear a crunching sound from the tree line behind me. It made me jump enough to get my shoes a bit wet, which was bad enough. But I also recall thinking, really, a nosy badger or something like that had come to see what was happening right at that moment. I was still tidying myself up when I now hear a further noise. This time it was a good thing that I had already relieved myself I heard a growl. I am no expert at all on nocturnal animal behavior, but I was now pretty certain this was not a badger. For just a moment, I was frozen, my brain telling me to get in the car. My legs were just let's play stick in the mud. And then he appeared, just walked out of the tree line and onto the grass in front. At very first glance, I panicked. I thought it was a werewolf in the flesh, and I was a goner. But I was alive, and I looked again. It looked more like a dog. I know it sounds ludicrous, but it was a man's body with a dog's head. Vicious looking, but more human than werewolf-like. Tall, covered with very dark hair, and also very slender. Then he growled at me again. My legs almost became unglued, and I piled myself back in the car and drove out of there quickly. For some reason, even though this creature appeared hostile, it never made an attempt at me or my life or to get me in my car. It's like it respected the fact that I got in my car and drove off. Maybe it was trying to scare me away this entire time. I'm just glad it didn't appear to follow me but I sure as hell did not look back or stop until I get home. For reference, 